What's up guys, Kudo Kun here, thank you so much for stopping by. This is going to be the last video in the Shauna video series. A big thank you to everybody who supported the Shauna series, and I'm very excited to see what we'll be covering next month. The last deck we'll be looking at here is a deck I like to call Turbo Villains, focusing around the villains of the show. I liked building this deck because I got to build a lot with blue, and blue isn't a color that you normally see a lot of in Shauna decks. So without further ado, let's get that deck list. As always, if you're just here to net deck the deck list, then here it is. Please enjoy. All I ask is that you leave me a like on your way out. For the rest of us, you might notice that I got a little greedy when building this deck because I tried to build with the traditional villains, and then I tried to fit in Snakeface and Snakeface's crew. A more traditional take on Shauna villains would probably take one of the two cores and then build around it with yellow and red, but ah, we see too much yellow and red in Shauna, so we're just going to do it this way. As you guys probably know already, Shauna doesn't have very good level 0 play, but we do get access to a 4000, so it's going to be a little bit better for us at level 0 than it would be for a traditional Shauna deck. So our main beater at this level is going to be Sabrok, of course, because he's a 4000 level 0, which isn't something that's normally talked about in Shauna decks. See, Shauna players don't normally worry about how their level 0 goes, and the rest of the deck just isn't built to have good level 0 play, so normally people just ignore this and leave it out for a card that gives them better consistency or a card with more utility. But I want to use a beater, so I'm going to do that. Beautiful Whim Fellas, the standard pay 1, drop 1, search your deck for a card. This one searches almost every single card in the entire deck, so it's one of the best. Priestess Ekade, got a runner for Snake Face. I like her a lot more here, because villains don't cost that much stock to play, so you can use her pay 2 to draw a card a lot more often in this deck. Still though, before level 2 she's not that useful. Corpse Retriever Lamy is our no Mr. President. I'm so mad that the site called him Corpse Retriever Lamy, okay? He's Lamy the Corpse Collector, that's who he is. Just rolls off the tongue, you know? Anyways, if he's in the back row and something dies, you can sacrifice him to save that character. That's essentially what he's for. He also has a cute little ability where if you use a backup, you can get another 500 on top of the backup, so it's kind of useful for that too, but the back row is going to be just so busy with uh, characters coming in and out of it that he's not going to be that useful for long. He more makes it a lot easier to play your level 1. Speaking of level 1, here it is. This is where our play should start to pick up a little. For Bell Pale Strategist, because of course, if every card in the game were this good, I would be out of a job because everybody would just be gods at this game. Super Encore to the two duders in front, so you'll normally be using this to keep Snake Face alive or your Changers alive. Yes, of course, it's a Shauna deck, it's gonna have Changers. And you can pay one to cycle a card from your hand as many times as you want to. Seriously, a great card, I would never run it at less than four. Unfortunately, we won't get to use Large Varge, so no Belgery, but you know what? That would be cheating and it would make the deck way too good and not fun anymore. So we gotta use something else. The card I'm using is Heikade Moment of Confrontation, a climax combo that searches for a card and doesn't cost any stock, and it also has a unique form of Encore where you can sacrifice one of your characters in play to keep her alive. For those of you that are confused about this ability, uh, the reason that it's usable is you can sacrifice characters who have already been reversed. The fact that they're kicked to the clock is kind of a downside, but at the same time, level 2 is where the fun happens anyway, so it's not as bad here. I really wouldn't try to keep her alive, like, more than twice maybe, but she's good for those two times. Last level 1 we'll look at is Trinity Sydney, And I know that pronunciation's gonna trigger somebody, so, uh, his... Japanese name is Shudonai, which I'm almost positive is their way of interpreting the name Sydney, so I'm just gonna call him Sydney. Shudonai is just so much more ridiculous to say. So Trinity is the first of our two changers. You can pay three, discard a card, and turn him into Thousand Changes Sydney, which is a pretty big beefy boy. The cool thing about changers like this is you can discard the card you're changing into, so if you get 1000 changes in your hand and you play Trinity, then you can just discard 1000 changes and then play it as part of the cost. 3 is a little bit expensive for it, but what are you gonna do? So like most sets, level 2 is where the magic happens. This is 
As you can see where the deck starts to sort of split off a little bit because we're trying to run two win conditions at once. I want to reiterate that in a more competitive version of the deck you would use flame to go into villains late game or you would have villains without god of creation and transition into flame in the late game. So let's just look at our change target first, Thousand Changes Sydney, which is a pretty fitting name. We're only using two copies, if this were a more core strategy we would definitely be using more. But the idea is if we can get one of these in our hands during level 1, then we can just pull off the Sydney change combo and then not have to worry about it anymore. So the Duder is a level 2, 8500, 2 soul attacker, and if your experience level is 3 or higher, you can give 1 stock to give everybody plus 500 power until the end of your opponent's turn. This ability is kinda weak, but we should have enough stock lying around that we could do it if we really wanted to. You mainly just want him to be a 2 soul attacker that drops at level 1. And if you hit level 2 and that hasn't happened yet, you probably won't be focusing too much on this card. Ah, good ol' Snake Face. You can only play him when you have three very specific characters in play. We've already looked at Priestess Hekade and Strategist Bel Peol. These are both back row characters, so it should be pretty easy to get this guy out most of the time, except Hekade is pretty useless <laughs> before level 2, so a lot of the time you'll just want to hold on to a Hekade in your hand and then drop Hekade and General Sydney at the same time, and then drop God of Creation. If you can manage to do all of this though, then he's a 10,000 2 soul attacker. And he gives all of your other characters 1,000 power, which is fun. So the main idea is to get one of these guys out and then keep him alive with Bel Peol, and then hopefully, maybe if you're really lucky, get a second one out. It is technically possible to get three of these guys out because you can have your last god of creation eat General Sydney, and he's not much of a loss, so it's okay. But at three copies, it's pretty much never going to happen, and I think it's okay to just have one of these guys out and then have the other spaces be benefited by him. I'm pretty tough on General Sydney, okay? He's not the worst card ever made. My problem with him is he breaks the combo that Snake Face is supposed to set up by not helping with the Snake Face strategy at all. On the turn you play him, he gets plus 500 power until the end of the turn for each of your flame characters. It's a one turn buff. He doesn't keep it afterwards, and you have to have him to play Snake Face. If his power bonus were permanent or semi-permanent, then he would be a perfect addition to the combo, but it's not, and it hurts the combo really badly. In the rest of the combo, it's so easy to see what they were going for. You have Bel Peol in the back, you have Hekade in the back, and then Bel Peol keeps Snake Face alive, Heikade boosts Snake Face every turn while getting you a card draw every turn, and then you're supposed to use Bel Peol's other spot to keep Sydney alive, but Sydney's not a card that's worth keeping alive because he's essentially an 8000 vanilla after the first turn. Maybe because this set was early enough that they thought that would be broken or something, but even if his effect was just during your turn you get plus 500 for each of your flame characters, it would be a lot better, but it's not. Like, yeah, just having him as like a 9,000 vanilla isn't awful, but it would be so much better if the strategy worked more around having him in play and Snake Face in play and having them win the game for you. Especially with how difficult the combo already is to pull off, I wish there weren't so many restrictions on it, but that's essentially what he does. You drop him, for one turn he gets plus 500 times your flame characters, and then he's just an 8,000 vanilla afterwards. You might as well just let him die and play something else in his place. This is our last real level 2, and of course, she's a changer. Hekade, result of thousands of wishes. You have to discard a card from your hand, but again, I want to remind you, you can discard the card you're changing into. Other than that, she's not really that remarkable. We are using two copies of a 3k backup, partly to combo with Lamia, and partly just because level 2 is so important to us. Nothing special about it, just a 3k backup. And finally, we get onto our level 3. So the last card of the deck is Hekade Divine Summoning. If we're being real here for a second, she's not great, she's not a game-winning card, but she does have a lot of utility. She heals on play, even if it's through change, and when you play her climax, you draw a card, you heal, and she becomes stock at the end of the turn, so it kind of hurts that she kills herself after you get this attack off, but at the same time she becomes stock and not part of your discard pile, so I guess she ends up being kind of useful. Really the best thing about this card is you can bring it out at level 2 using the change combo. Hard casting her at level 3 kinda hurts, but you know, she's good enough. 
These are the two Climaxes used in the deck, both used for Climax combos. They're both the plus 2k, plus 1 soul, draw 1 card Climaxes. So when you're redrawing your opening hands, try to keep a Bell Paol if you can. If you can't, it's completely understandable. There's no other fancy tricks here. Just get rid of everything that isn't a zero. Maybe try to keep a Bell Paol. Your level zero is not going to be very big or loud, which could actually be okay for you. If you level up before your opponent, then it's going to give you a chance to drop your change combos a lot earlier, and it's going to give you a bigger boost in the long run. That's not to say you shouldn't try to level up your opponent, but you shouldn't be too discouraged if you get leveled up before your opponent does. Your main focus here is try to get a Heikade in the back row if you can, and if you don't have a full row of attackers, just put her out there and attack with her too. And also try to get some Veluses. Veles is your golden ticket. Try to use her to spackle whatever strategy you're trying to work on. Your first priority should be to set up Sydney into Thousand Changes. Your second priority should be to get a level 3 Heikade that you can clock so that you can uh, level up with it to get that experience. And then your third priority are snake face pieces, so try and get stuff in that order if you can. Obviously, this is so early in the game that you don't have to worry too much about it, but uh, getting off that change into thousand changes is going to help your level 1 a lot. Alright, so at level 1, your ideal setup should be this. You should have a bell pail in the back, but never two bell pails at the same time. If you get a second bell pail, just play it for free and play it as an attacker. You should have a Corpse Collector Lamy in the back. If you can't get a Corpse Collector, don't worry too much about it. Having a Heikade is good too. In your front row, you should be focusing everything on pulling off Sydney's change. It should be pretty easy. There's only two copies of Thousand Changes, so it might be a little difficult to pull off, but hopefully you were able to get everything you needed to pull it off here. Having 1,000 changes out there attacking every turn is going to put a lot of pressure on your opponent and really give you a free pass for everything else. Your main beater, though, is going to be Heikade Confrontation, so just drop her if you really need to and attack with some zeros and her, and then use the zeros to keep her alive if you really have to. This is sort of your backup plan for if you just know that the Sydney change isn't going to happen. Like, try and focus on getting the Sydney change off, but if it doesn't happen, go ahead and focus on using Heikade to push your opponent as fast as you can, and just sacrifice your zeros to get you to level 2 faster. When you're playing a change deck like this and you can't get those changes off consistently, then that's when you really need to go aggro and uh, really push your opponent to the wall. So at level 2, everything should be focused on getting into Snake Face and your Heikade change. If you're missing any pieces for Snake Face and you have a Felis, go ahead and use Felis to get your other pieces. Uh, just do everything you can to get your Snake Face in play, and then after Snake Face you'll transition again. This deck does not have a reliable level 3 strategy, so don't count on getting to level 3 and then having something pop off, it's not going to happen. Your main strategy here is going to be pulling off the stuff you would normally pull off at level 3 on level 2. If you went into this level with a thousand changes, great, you did everything right. If you weren't able to get a thousand changes, then you're probably a little behind right now, so try not to use Heikade's ability too much here, and uh, just try to get that snake face off as fast as you can. Don't forget you can use Bell Paol to cycle any climaxes out of your hand or to help get to your snake face pieces faster if you really have to, but try to avoid spinning stock if you can until after your first deck refresh. Once you have a snake face in play, everything changes. Don't try to go for more snake faces, don't try to focus on anything else related to snake face, just keep one alive with Bell Paol and then transition into Heikade's change. Once you've dropped all of this, get a level 2 Heikade in play, and then try to get that level 3 Heikade out so that you can use its climax combo to keep you healthy. The longer you can stay at level 2, the more of a chance you're going to have at winning here. Something you have to keep in mind is, like every other deck out there in the metagame is trying to get to level 3, because level 3 is some kind of huge game-winning uh, play that they're going to make. So for you, you don't have that. You don't have a level 3 play that's going to win you the game. So what you need to do is pull off your level 2 changes to heal, stay as healthy as you can, and then if your opponent does do some big level 3 play and you're still on level 2, you have a buffer that will let you take that and then continue to deal out consistent damage. At level 3 you should already have established some kind of lead over your opponent. I know Snake Face isn't the greatest strategy out there, but he's good enough that you should have gotten some kind of field presence, and you should have gotten your opponent to level 3 before you. 
So from here on out, it should just be throwing cards at your opponent until they die. You should have enough of a buffer that you can take whatever level 3 strategy they can use. If they're running P5, if they're running Disgaea, if they're running anything, you should be able to take it okay. Don't be afraid to go into full-on desperacy mode and just start moving your back row up there and attacking with them too. Once your opponent is level 3 and they've taken a couple of damage, you shouldn't have to worry about keeping up Bell Payol or any kind of super encore. Just get everything out there and start attacking. If your opponent did level you up to level 3 before them, um, then I'm sorry. There's not a whole lot I can do. Uh, your level 3 just doesn't pop off like theirs does, so you're going to be at a huge disadvantage. This is probably going to be an L for you. Uh, I guess if Liam Neeson is your dad, try to describe what your opponent looks like. Maybe after your opponent takes this game, he'll go and he'll get it back from them or whatever. At least your loss will turn into an awesome action movie. I really don't know what to tell you after that. So that's pretty much it for the deck. Thank you all so much for watching. I wish I had gotten a few more games in with this and the other decks that I built for the Shauna series, but unfortunately we weren't able to. These will be in the collection though, so if you ever want to see these decks in action, then you can check them out during my live streams called Card Games and Chill every Friday or Saturday, as long as my internet doesn't crash a thousand times. I've actually got about an hour to get ready for today's, so I'll see you there! Hey you, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you left me a like. They help the channel grow and let me know that you want more of this kind of content in the future. The channel is currently being supported by these lovely folks on Patreon. You guys rock! If you have any thoughts on the video, of course leave them in the comment section below along with suggestions on what I should do next, but also answer this question to prove that you made it to the end of the video, if you feel like it. And finally, if you found this video by accident, then subscribe to stay up to date on the latest Kudo news. You can also hit the notification bell. Ringing the little bell will let you know when I upload a new video. See you next time!